Daniel Mendes, and I'm going to be doing why college athletes deserve to be paid. So when it comes to scholarships, only 1% of uh, student athletes actually are on a full academic or athletic ride. And these full rides are typically reserved for the sports that make more money. For men, this is basketball and football. And for girls, this is basketball, tennis, volleyball, and gymnastics. And this is according to Forbes. And I believe college athletes should be paid because they bring in a lot of money, work hard, and risk their health and future careers. For why this topic matters, I believe this topic matters to y'all because as college student, most of y'all pay at least a little bit of attention to like the sports that go on in college and you guys probably want what's best for the athletes. For the amount of scholarships in D1 NCAA sports, football has 81 at Division 1 and 36 at Division 2, and an average active roster is 130. Basketball has 13 at Division 1, 10 at Division 2, and an average active roster is 15. Baseball has 11 at Division 1, 9 at Division 2, and an average active roster is 40. Track is 12 at Division 1 and 2, and have an average active roster of 65. Golf has four in Division One and three in Division Two, and have an average active roster of ten. But this is only like the people who are currently playing. This doesn't count red shirts, medical red shirts, or gray shirts. And these stats are on GMTV. The three main points I'm going to be covering are revenue in college sports, time and effort that these athletes put in, and then the health and future careers of them. For revenue in college sports, the NCAA makes a lot of money. They made 1.12 billion in 2019, then it dropped to 519 million in 2020 due to COVID-19. Then it bounced back up to 1.16 billion in 2021, and 1.14 billion in 2022, and 1.3 billion in 2023. And these stats are on sport to code. So these athletes put in a lot of time and effort into their sport. They have 20 hours of mandatory practice a week, but this doesn't count towards competition time, travel, or any treatment for recovery that they have to do on their own time, or any extra practice that they decide to practice. And according to Business Insider, baseball actually practices for about 42 hours a week, basketball 39 hours a week, football 43, and all other sports average around 32. So this is about almost like a full-time job. So a lot of these athletes don't have time to go and like make money on their own because they're putting so much time into this. Now when it comes to health and future careers, it's really hard to go to the next level, that being pro. So this is a lot of like prime time for these athletes. So they're never gonna be making money from all the time that they put in and all the hard work. It's now, because it's really hard to make the NFL, NBA, MLB, et cetera. So, I mean, they're already making so much money for the NCAA and they're providing entertainment, so I believe they, get, they should be paid. In conclusion, college athletes need to go through a lot of hard work where they dedicate a lot of time and risk their career every game or play that they are a part of, and because of the profit that the NCAA is able to make off of them, and how many of them don't have professional sports career after college, I believe that they deserve to be paid for what they do. And then those are my sources.